So some recent news that was pretty big in the landscape of professional wrestling. Well, maybe, maybe not. I guess it depends on your perspective. But we got the announcement that Anthem was going to move Impact Wrestling to Canada full time. They were going to consolidate their operations in Nashville and move most everything to Toronto, where the company is headquartered, that they're going to run the majority of their shows in Canada. And this, of course, is marking a significant market change for this company, which I believe is now called Impact Wrestling, whatever. And, you know, the positive spin you can put on this, and there can be positive spin put on it, that sometimes a shakeup is a good thing. A shakeup is a necessary thing. Trimming the fat can be a positive. For all intents and purposes, starting over on the fly can be thought of as a positive. Taking a new path, a new avenue, a new approach, shaking yourself out of a rut can be all viewed as positive things. And I think everybody can agree that has watched this company's product in recent years, even before Anthem got it. You know, being in the impact zone was a bit of a drag. They weren't running live events. You know, there's just a lot of different things. It felt like this company needed a major and significant shakeup. And clearly, by making this type of movie, we're trying to disassociate yourself from the past of the company, which can be kind of a slippery slope to go down. But honestly, some of the, pe the people that used to watch this show don't anymore. So how much do you really need to associate yourself with that history? Because that history, for all intents and purposes, is gone and forgotten. So I'm really not that surprised that this move was made. I find it head-scratching that for a little while this company was kind of denying they were going to make this move and then ultimately made the move anyways. And I think that's the thing you typically know in professional wrestling or just the business world in general. If a company's out there in public denying it, that means there's more than a little truth to it and it's probably eventually bound to happen. And that's basically what did here. Um, in terms of from a business standpoint, you know, you heard some about this with Bound for Glory, where they were trying to get some tax breaks for having a certain percent of their production team uh, being from Canada. So maybe they feel like from a tax standpoint, it is more advantageous to be in Canada than it is in the U.S. Maybe they feel like with the company being owned by somebody that station out of Canada that it makes logical sense to kind of align them in the organization umbrella and that kind of makes sense too and I mean this is something you'll see a lot in the business world when you have mergers and you have acquisitions fats trimmed off you're trying to consolidate operations you're trying to take the good from what you bought and get rid of the bad from what you bought so it happens you know and surely I'm I know people are gonna lose their jobs for this with that company and that sucks but ultimately it's one of those things from a business standpoint that if the greater good is that it makes that company healthier and stronger long term, then too bad, so sad, not really. Some of these people had to go and this move had to be made. And you're still talking about being stationed out of Canada, which still to this day has a very big professional wrestling fan base, a very rabid professional wrestling fan base. It's not a bad country to base your operations out of. Now it can bring you some logistical challenges of trying to bring some talent that's not from Canada in and out of the country, but you have plenty of talent that you could use and you have a wide network of independent promotions that you could use and it still doesn't totally preclude you from making some shots, making some spots in the United States, which you're ultimately going to have to do. But I look at it and, and I hope it's the start of something different. After so many years of hoping for something different for the company, maybe this is finally it. Uh, but we probably should pump the brakes on getting too excited about this. We should probably really pump the brakes on giving Anthem too much credit for this. Because when you look at this company and you look at kind of the way they've conducted business and the way they've made some of the business decisions they've made, it really makes you wonder if the people running this operation know what the hell they're doing. I mean, first of all, you have to question the logic of wanting to buy into, at the time, TNA. Why would you want to do that? You know they weren't in a good place. You know that with ineffective leadership, terrible decision-making over the years, that there were significant financial burdens there, there were significant stigmas to overcome, and you're not dealing from the same place of strength in terms of television network and so forth that you had four or five years ago with the company. So looking at it from the outside looking in, 
who the hell would look at that operation and think that that's a good short, medium, or even long-term investment in a way to make any real money? Because ultimately, wrestling is just like anything else, a business. The number one goal of a business is to make money. How are you really going to make a ton of money buying into this company? So you have to question the business logic there. For the Impact Wrestling, the old GFW, TNA fans, whoever the hell, whatever the hell you want to call yourself, you know, that might hurt your feelings a little bit. But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being glad that they bought it because at least the company still exists to this day. And as many times as we wave the white flag and we talk about their dying, they still technically exist. So that's a positive. But, again, from a strictly business standpoint, put your biases and bullshit aside. It doesn't seem like the smartest business decision. So you have to question the people that made that business decision. Then going into business with Jeff Jarrett and his fraud of a vanity project that was Global Force Wrestling with those television tapings, the pilot episode and such in the bag and no network was going to pick them up with no real functional roster that ran very limited shows and all this other crap trying to run it as some 21st century NWA ripoff bullshit. You wanted to merge with them. You wanted to bring in the founder, Jeff Jarrett. The guy who very quickly put TNA into a spot where if Dixie Carter and her family didn't come in and purchase the company and infuse it with cash, the company might have died then. The same company, Jeff Jarrett, who brought in people that he made sure over the years would take care of him and book him well, seeing Jim Cornette, see Vince Russo, see so many others that ruined so many young guys who never really truly fully got a chance to be the guy or truly get over all the way because they were always served up to guys like Jeff Jarrett and obviously others too. So this is the guy you want to go into business for and apparently you didn't do enough research to find out that Jeff Jarrett was trying to per perpetrate some type of pyramid scheme with the stupid 24 karat gold crap on the GFW website that should have let you know what type of operation that was to begin with. You're merging with a company to take its name that has absolutely no real name recognition whatsoever or any, any brand loyalty or anything. Again, from a business standpoint, why the hell would you do that? You could say, well, you are trying to move on from the past and you're trying to get away from that stupid TNA name so everybody doesn't think you're tits and ass wrestling. Ha ha ha. I get it. But you have to look at the brand that you were buying. You were buying a nothing. You were buying getting into a fraud. You were merging with a sham and a scam. How the hell Anthem couldn't see that, I don't know. So again, you have to question the intelligence and the business savvy and the decision-making abilities of the people running that company. So who the hell thinks merging with Jeff Jarrett's fraud is going to be a good idea? And then not bothering to do the research and saying, oh my God, Jeff Jarrett is a freaking blithering idiot drunk now. Maybe that's not the best guy that we want to go into business with. The same company that bought into this changed the name from TNA, it's Impact, but then it's GFW, and then it's Impact again. It's one thing to rebrand yourself once, but once you make that decision once, that's what you need to go with and you need to stay with it. Because branding is everything. And the idiots that now run this company have changed the name multiple times in a less than a 12 month stretch. That's not smart business. That is idiots in over their head not knowing what the hell they're doing. Having amateur hour in the big leagues of the business world. Period. Then deciding you're going to run shows like Bound for Glory and you're, you're following t uh, TV tapings up in Canada where you know you could potentially have issues with some of the talent that you have that have been featured on your TV that are supposed to be at that show, the Bound for Glory show, supposed to be at the pay-per-view afterwards, and you still do it anyways. So knowing that you're advertising a false bill of goods that several people are supposed to be on the show that ultimately are not, the people that you have devoted months of television time to just to be absolutely no payoff whatsoever. This is the same type of crap we used to hammer Dixie Carter for. We most certainly should be hammering Anthem for this bullshit that they're doing with Impact Wrestling now. And furthermore, speaking to it from the amateur hour that is in charge, that is running this show, how in the hell do you not anticipate potential issues with Taya Valkyrie and Jim Cornette and Taryn Terrell and others before you make those types of decisions? 
good businesses, good business people would do what we call research to try and become, you know, while it may not be appropriate to say SME, subject matter experts in this particular space, you would make sure you would be researched well to educate yourself so that way you're in a position of no, so you can anticipate these types of things coming up and either A, doing something to make sure it's not an issue, or B, avoiding using those talents for that period of time leading up to those shows where they won't be able to ultimately appear. You would do something to change your plans and go away from them. But of course this company didn't because while the owners might be different, the stupidity is still the same. And frankly, 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 as much as we all over the years and we're all guilty of this, wanted to knock Dixie Carter and crap on Dixie Carter and skip these skip and whoop-de-woo and believe me, it's fair to throw plenty of criticism her way. You should be pining for the days of Dixie Carter running this operation based off of the bullshit we've got now. If you have faith in Anthem or Ed Norholm, you are delusional at this point. What in the hell makes you think that this company knows what the hell they're doing? What the hell makes you think that you have good business people making good business decisions? What the hell makes you think that all of this consolidating and trimming of the fat and moving their operations to Canada is going to mean two hella beans. They still have a crappy television deal. At the, this time, they're still not doing live events. They're still doing television tapings in the can months in advance. And not to mention potentially some of the logistical issues of getting some of the people up to Canada to do the TV tapings in the future. I really, really hope that this goes well. And it at least kind of cuts the losses, but kind of like stubs the tide of negative momentum that this company's had for the past two to three years. Just stop the bleeding is all it needs to do. That's a good first step. That's a good initial victory. But based off of the leadership right now that's overseeing running Impact Wrestling, I have absolutely zero faith that's what's going to happen. These guys couldn't run a wrestling business to save their freaking lives. And you've seen plenty of evidence already to indicate as such. And when you look outside again of your own biases and bullshit, and you look at this strictly objectively, who looks at anything Anthem has done right now and thinks that that is an indication that they are good business people and can make good business decisions? I mean, seriously, give me a break. I hope it works. I really, truly, truly hope it works. And it could, just from the simple standpoint of it is something different. It is a shakeup for this company. But don't be surprised if it doesn't freaking work and then this dumb, dumb ownership decides they want to try something else that ultimately, too, because they are dumb, will not work. <laughs>